Hello, Floss Tube Land. I'm Terry. And I'm Jamie. And we're, we're the, the Cornhusker State, State Stitchers. Stitchers. Today is Sunday, July 17th, 2022, and this is Floss Tube number 45. And welcome to our channel about cross stitching. We're mm -hmm. glad you're here. Glad whenever you're watching it that mm -hmm. you're joining us. Um, we appreciate you guys. We're on a Sunday this time instead of a Saturday. But, yep. You know, life, so. It is. We're here. It is. We are. Yeah, yeah I called mom yesterday. I'm like, I think tomorrow's going to be a better day. I yeah. think we should do it tomorrow. We were both having that day. <laughs> yep. So. <laughs> okay. What you been it's doing? It's been two weeks. Yeah. Um, we had the 4th of July. Yeah, we did have the 4th of July. Well, everybody had a 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> the calendar even had a 4th of July. How about Imagine that? that. <laughs> we had an Independence Day. <laughs> we had family over. Mom and Dad came over. We made food. Um, Steph and the boys came over. Jim's mom came over, so we had just a good family time. And our family from Colorado was yep, here. Yep, Lou and Eric were here too. And then Eric ended up staying with us for a week, so we were just kind of bumming around. Jim and I actually took a week off of work. You would think we would have had time to do everything we wanted to, but never. That mm -hmm. doesn't happen. Anytime Jim and that I... That errand's done, that was yeah. about it. Yeah, anytime Jim and I take the same amount of time off work, we are way busier than we ever would be. So we did get a lot of errands done, a lot of things that needed to be done. Because, you know, when you work an 8-to-5 job, how do you get off of work to go somewhere that is an 8-to-5 place? Right. So, we did a lot of that stuff. We watched the dogs, too. We went to Top Golf. That was fun. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lots of eating. I, I have arthritis. We mentioned this the last time. So, holding... I don't golf, but holding that golf stick, <laughs> golf club. <laughs> By the time we were done after two hours, my thumb hurt so bad. Mm -hmm. My last ball, I finally had to tell somebody else, "You got to hit it because yep. my finger hurts so bad, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I don't want to ruin my cross stitch finger." <laughs> <laughs> That's an important thumb. That's I got to keep that. You know, next time you could put a brace on there if you wanted I'm to. I'm going to. Yeah. I want to do it again. It was so much fun. You do? Okay. Yeah. It is going to... So we went with six people. It's a great number, but with six people, you don't golf as much as you would like. So if you really just want to get in the swing of it, four people is perfect. Yeah. Lots of fun stuff well, that so week. We started going to the lake this week, fun Yes. Lake. About time. You're still working on your boat, but we took our boat out. Mm -hmm. It's smaller, but... It's a boat. We're, we're it's there. the lake. And it's just a means of getting us out further into the water so we can jump into the water. <laughs> exactly. So it doesn't matter what we're on. As long as it floats. Um, that's it. I'm still working on kitchen remodel. Mm -hmm. Nothing much is going fast there, but... That's just... That's where that's, we're at. That's life. Okay. No big updates. How about we just jump into questions? Let's do that. So they're on my phone today, so give me just a second. Because, of course... I close it. If you hear anybody talking, that's just downstairs. So I actually have an HVAC guy here today on a Sunday mm -hmm. doing some work. But, you know, whenever they can come in, I don't care. Just get it done. Exactly. Exactly. So Stonehouse Stitching. Um, sounds like you have an in interesting job, Mom. She called you Terry. But <laughs> we'll both... You can call me Mom. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> will you both tell us what you do for a living? So I'm in aviation. Um my husband's actually an AMP mechanic, so we have our own business. He does maintenance, I do book work, and I help on the floor um, recovering aircraft. Old aircraft are fabric covered. Mm -hmm. So I do that. Um, and we are also the airport managers of a small airport. So we do all the mowing and the snow removal and maintenance, maintenance and coordinating building tea hangers and just Anything you can think of. I Daily even, life. Yeah, even the janitor. So mm -hmm. we do it all. That's what I do. That is that is a fun job. Yeah. And then I am a civil engineer with the Department of Transportation here in Nebraska. I am officially now the utility engineer. Um, I did have a design side underneath me as well as utilities. So what that meant was just I had designers who were actually designing the projects that get built. I was able to kind of shift my duties a little bit. So I'm just working on utilities now. So any project that has utilities, underground, overhead, power. Which is basically any project that goes through. Every project. Yeah. yeah. So all your utilities being water, sewer, power, gas, anything like that. We coordinate, make sure they're out of the way for the construction project. Uh, get the third party company doing it to get it, like I said, out of the way. 
Um, but it's, it's a very interesting job. There's a lot of personalities that we have to deal with. Yeah. Lots of um, problem solving. <laughs> I really hope you guys can't hear what's going on downstairs because they're guys and they're talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay next question speaking of guys yeah well, i'm just gonna insert this here real quick because we are talking questions you guys have mentioned a couple times that you want to see our husbands again uh, my husband was talking to me about it and if you guys are interested if you want them to come back on they said they will answer questions so if you have they, they don't really feel comfortable coming here and just trying to talk because they don't know what to talk about they cool. obviously don't something. know anything about cross stitch so if you guys could just come up with a list of questions, something you want to ask them, mm-hmm. Anything. then we'll get them back on and answer questions, and at least they'll have something to talk about. Yep, and then you can start to see their personalities a little bit oh, more, too. Geez, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. Yeah, so throw up questions in the comments below. Um, you can also send us questions on Instagram if you're interested, and we'll, we'll mention it the next time, too. I'm not sure when we'll be able to get them back on, but... Yeah, ask any kind of questions, you know, what they do for a living, what their hobbies are, interests, how they feel about us. I don't know. Yeah, don't Anything. ask that. <laughs> You'll get some fun stuff. <laughs> don't, don't ask Jim what he thinks of his mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Just know it'll be said with love. <laughs> I don't know if we could post it. So Robin had asked, going back to our questions now, um, Robin had asked, last year I remember Jamie stitched an eagle face and it was patriotic colors. Would you please remind us of the pattern name and designer sometime? So I'm not 100% sure which one you're referring to. I pulled up that picture on my phone and I can't. Yeah. I can't show it. I can pu- pull it up here too. No, I don't have it. Anyway, I'm doing, Mom and I are both doing a Heaven and Earth Designs that is... That has a couple eagles on it, and it's in red, white, and blue. I'm not sure if that's the one you were actually referring to, but that one... Well, after we get done recording, we'll try and insert it. Okay. Here. Okay, so we'll insert a picture. (laughs) That one is called um, Together We Stand by Heaven and Earth Designs. I cannot remember who the artist is right now, but that's, that's one of them. There is another pattern you might be thinking of, but it's not one that I have stitched. I know Maine Moose Mom on Instagram has stitched it before, and it was um, actually just the face of the eagle with all patriotic colors, red, white, and blue. So that could be what you're thinking of, but I didn't stitch it, so I'm not sure. But yeah, we'll insert a um, picture of that other one. Can you make a note so I don't forget that? Yeah. Because I apparently don't have a pen around here. No, that's because I'm playing with it. (laughs) Um, What's it called? United We Stand? Together We Stand. (laughs) That's fine. Same difference. Insert picture is (laughs) good. Okay, let me let me do that. Okay, let me insert pick here. <laughs> let me go back to questions. Okay, Deborah had asked. Um, she says she thinks she's used the Art- Artiste brand of cloth, so the brand of um, cross stitch cloth that you get at Hobby Lobby, and she's thought it was too crunchy and has a tendency to fray. And what do we think of it? So she's just wondering what. We think of the Artis brand and then also Charles Craft and anything else like that. The Artis brand that I use is just the um, natural. And I have not had any problems with it. I think it's really soft and durable. I like it a lot. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it compares to it's a witch out product, right? I'm not sure. I'd have to look, but it, re- which is funny, it resembles re- witch out linen. Yeah. But you it, don't like witch out linen. No, I didn't mean which out. I meant the other one. What's the other one? Zweigart. Zweigart, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'd have to look at it. I don't know. Good thing we did our research. <laughs> I have not had any problem with it. I really like it a lot. Um, I haven't tried the light blue one that we showed a couple weeks ago. So what I find with all of those um, kind of department store type brands, they just put a lot of starch in them. That's what I find to be what makes it so crunchy. So I do a couple things. Um, anytime we dye fabric, we always dye it in water. So we really have a tendency to get that starchy out. And we work with it too. Um, so I find that helps a lot. I, anytime you just work with it, stitch, it'll it'll soften up. Yep. I've never actually officially pre-washed fabric, but maybe. Hand-dyed fabric, I would be very careful of that because you can't be sure it's color fast. Um what I was going to say, oh, I've also taken, when I get a kit 
say my dimensions kit or something, I will actually take it and I will crumble all of it up before I stitch on it and then iron it. And that helps. That helps quite a bit. And you just picked up some that is so stiff it about hurts your fingers trying <laughs> it to work is, with yeah. it. So this is an Artiste brand, but this is the, um, maybe, hold on. <laughs> anyway, it's the Loops and Threads brand from Michaels. And it resembles Monaco, even though it's not called Monaco, but it is incredibly stiff. Like, you can't even tell how stiff it is, other than the fact it can stand up on its own. I can't get that out. I'm just rattling plastic. <laughs> My <laughs> suggestion was that we're going to dye this, and I think that'll help a lot. So. But she saw it, and she wanted to try it, so yeah. why not? See what it's like. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Well, Yes. I gotta find it though. Hold on. Slam in the screen door. Um, please tell us what is your favorite food or dessert on an Independence Day celebration. That was good timing, by the way, because I have something I want to share. Oh, okay. Um, mine is, I call it, I've grown up calling it Spazilio. Mm -hmm. Most people call it frog eyed salad, but it's just um, pasta, yep. fruit. Achini de pepe. Achini de pepe, yeah. Pasta, um, fruit. Marshmallows, cool. whipped cream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lots of marshmallows, lots of maraschino cherries. And I hated it until I got pregnant with my son. <laughs> it's and all Derek's fault. No, I can't get enough of it. That's my favorite. Yeah, that is really good. Now, the recipe, is that on the It's pasta? usually on the back of the Achini di Pepe mm -hmm. box. Yep. And that noodle is hard to find this year. I cannot find it. They're just really tiny little, they look like fish eggs or frog eyes, you know? That's why it became frog eyed salad. Yeah. So my, that I love, um, this is a new one this year. My sister-in-law, Steph, brought it to one of our family gatherings. And I'm like, Steph, I need this recipe. I've got to have this. Um, it is Fiesta Corn Dip with Rotel. And I got it off of the Salty Side Dish um, blog. And we'll link that below. She's got a ton of recipes on there. And it's a great blog for that. But really what it is is just um, corn, cheese, rotel, which is your tomato, green chili combination, green onion, sour cream, and mayo, and it makes an amazing dip. And it's I'm not a dip person, and I just sit here and I eat it like crazy. It's so. really good with those scoopable Fritos. Yeah. It needs a hearty chip. It does, yep. Those are mine. I love them. That's that's ours. Those, that was mine. She's looking at me like I'm an idiot. Send her back to school. <laughs> at least I know I made a mistake and I corrected it, right? Yeah. Is that it? No. Calm down. <laughs> Speed up. Well, you said these to me. Belinda had asked, um, let's see. Oh, this is a great segue. So her question is related to the This is Halloween Sal, which we'll jump into here in just a second. But her question is, how does she accurately start on the bottom left of the project? So, going into that real quick. You put your needle in, the bottom left. <laughs> no? No. Okay. No. No. This is the project that she's talking about, or that spurred the question. This It is called This is Halloween by Primrose Cottage. Mom and I have decided to do a sal or a stitch along. So we're really excited about all those, all of you out there that are interested in joining us. And what we did is we took the, the picture and I just drew where it seemed appropriate to do sections. So we split it up into six sections. We plan, or we will be starting August 1st, which is a Monday. We are starting with um, section one. I'm a bottom right starter, and I kind of strong-armed mom into starting there, too. I always start the bottom right. I don't yeah. know where you get that I don't. Well, I'm just forcing my will on you. <laughs> That's really what it comes you down do. to. You yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm passive, so <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Just tell me what to do. <laughs> I'm a free spirit, right? <laughs> yeah, you are. Um, so we are going to start here with one, do it for a week, and then start on two, et cetera, et cetera. We also posted this on our Insta Instagram accounts if you want to take a look at it there. So the question being is if you're not normally a bottom right starter, how would you start there? So 
first I want to mention, if you're not a bottom right starter, you can start wherever you want. Yep. The only thing that we're doing is one section a week. Yep. So start with week week six, start mm-hmm. in the middle with week four, it doesn't matter. Absolutely. You can do any of it and all of it. It's perfect. But if you do want to try starting where you're not used to starting, so with a bottom right start, what we do, we always have at least a two inch margin. Well, you're going to see something I don't have a two inch margin on. <laughs> well, we try we, to have a two inch margin. One thing I want to mention before you answer the question is we do start in the bottom right, but we make our X from the bottom right to the top left. That's our first And leg. I think most everybody else, and I think this is what's prompting that question, is how you start in the bottom right if you stitch towards the right. So you'd almost have to count over whatever, 20 stitches, and then stitch to the right. Don't you think that's what she's asking? Or? Um, it's, I don't, it depends. So if you are very strict about always coming up in the same hole, always go down in the same hole, if you do start on one side you're not used to starting, you'll have a tendency to um, work your stitches over each other on the back. I know that probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but you'll use more thread is really what it boils down to. Um, so I'm not sure. I don't know. But. Basically, you don't. You just start wherever you want to start. It doesn't matter. We do try to do a two inch margin. So when we know we have that margin, we will measure up two inches and over two inches. And that's our starting point. Now, with this particular project, you can see that it doesn't actually start in the corner or potentially. So if it does not start in the corner, say, for example, you had to start up here. Here's your bottom point and you just count. You count up 10 squares or eight squares or whatever it turns out to be. There's a little more counting, that's all. Yeah? What do you mean it doesn't start in the bottom corner? I get so confused when you speak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You mean it's not flush in the corner? Yes. It's not the very bottom right mm -hmm. stitch? Okay. Your very first stitch. If it's not in the bottom corner of, if you were to draw a square down here, this is hard to do, and over here, if it's not right there in the bottom right corner, it's because you don't pay attention to me. <laughs> <laughs> All I hear is this wah, wah, wah. wah it's like wah, Char wah. Charlie Brown listening to her, his Christian. <laughs> His teacher. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Is this why you didn't? <laughs> anyway, okay. Now we've beaten a dead horse. The point being, <laughs> if you have any other questions, just let us know. We'll probably text them. That way you don't have to deal with this. <laughs> we'll probably confuse you, so ask away. We're just going to keep her quiet. <laughs> No, start wherever you would like to, whichever section you would like to, and then make sure you know what margin you have, and you can just count up from there. And just remember to tag us on Instagram. Yeah. We want to see it. We are using the hashtag, this is Halloween SAL, and we'll put that on the screen too. Can you make a note of that so we don't forget? Um, oh, something really fun. You said that Primrose tagged you or shared your post on their story on their yeah. story a couple days ago so they're so. promoting it also so that's really exciting that is very exciting and i had one lady i forget her name that said um she wants to do it but she doesn't have instagram that's fine you don't mm -hmm. have to post it yeah if you would like to post it um email me um share your progress and the email address is below in the description box mm -hmm. i can post it for you if that's what you would like or if but you just want to just, see it yeah. Exactly. Oh, there was one question that I did forget last time, and I don't remember who asked it, so I apologize. You had asked about putting salt in the dye, right. and if that helps the dye anytime we writ dye, if it helps it set it, and it's um, more color fast. We've never done that, so we've never tried it. I did research it, and the salt, from what I learned, does not make it more color fast. It doesn't adhere the color to it. Permanently, it just makes it even. More Evenly even. distributed. Yeah. So you don't have big hunks of color. Okay. So that's probably more if you're using a powdered dye. I would think, yeah. And we use the... Um, liquid. Liquid dye. And we don't use salt. No. And we actually mix it really, really well before we pour it on. So we do try to get that really mixed in. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on now that we've talked Please. a ridiculous amount. <laughs> Over nothing. Please. 20 minutes over nothing. This is your own channel. Please let's move on. 
<laughs> Let's go into whips. Jibber jabber. Okay. So I just started. You want me to start? Yeah, go for okay. it. You always start. I just started this this morning. I've been wanting to do sunflowers so bad. And it's like, heck, I'm just going to do it. I didn't finish my sales, but I'm going to just start this. You finished one of them. So I am starting the Nebraska poster. You've seen Jamie do it. Um, I have a question for you later about these words because mm -hmm. they're, they're not showing up on Pattern Pattern Keeper. They're probably in a white. Did you change this color in Pattern Keeper to be a We'll talk about later. I don't see it in there. But... Okay, so I just started that this morning. I wanted to do yellow. The first color I chose was the bottom right, <laughs> and it was green. But I did get 300 stitches in today. That's awesome. And this fabric is... Did you leave your tag downstairs? I left it over there. I went to pull it out. It's a Fortnite fabric. One of their early ones, One right? of their very early ones. It's a 32 count. Lugana. Lugana. And I Either did that way. so I didn't have to stitch the background or the sky. This is, I'm going to use this as the sky. Either way, it's not one of their It was colors. out of their club. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. 300 stitches in one morning. That's awesome. It was pretty simple. I flipped it out. Uh -huh, <laughs> see? It's hard to do that. Or hard not to. Do you want to discuss this one? Of course. It's a whip. Okay. I have something in my eye. Um, Jamie and I were working on our All-American by Primrose Cottage Stitchers. This is the sow that prompted our other sow. That we, it was just an internal sow. That we did together, yes. And that ended Thursday. Last Friday. Well, yeah, last, last Thursday. Thursday. So I finished mine on Saturday. And this is um, 32 Count Americana by, I almost had it, I was, give me a minute, Fabric Flare. Uh-huh. And it's also American Stars, not Americana. No, it says Americana. Right in the. Oh, American Americana Stars. Americana Stars. We're both wrong. You want to show yours? I will. Okay. Um, we did change colors too, so we'll have to talk about that here real quick. But this is mine. I got it done. And for once, I actually got it done before mom. You did. Because I finished mine last Wednesday. So fun fact. Uh, let's see. One, two, three. There are four blues in this pattern. I misread a symbol and I only have three blues in my pattern. But it's perfect. Okay, hold yours up. I have four. We did slightly different colors. Our reds and whites are the same. But isn't it pretty? You can see, especially in the word freedom, mine's lighter than Jamie's. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that, that's cute. I like that. Yes. That's one way to get things done. Just start a sow. Mm -hmm. We're going to probably... Always have a sow going now. If you guys want to know what colors we use, just let us know, and we'll we'll talk about them next week. Okay, and then we're both working on the spooky, sneaky, spooky spells by Misty Purcell of Luminous Fiber Arts. Her second clue came out last week. It's a mystery Halloween shalong. And I have not finished the second one. I'm doing mine on 40 count. 36 count? 36 count. What color? This color. <laughs> the color you see on the screen. Opulence. Opulence. 36 this, count. This was dyed by Misty herself. Yes. So. Um, I do want to note, see that little... Um, double nose? That's a little ghost. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we'll, yeah. We'll talk about the double nose in a minute. It's still not stitched. I was, I was seeing a ghost. <laughs> that is not the ghost that is stitched. That is a white spot on the fabric. It just it looks, perfect. I should just leave it that way and then I don't have to stitch it. Exactly. So then about the double nose. So I put this pattern in Pattern Keeper. Pattern Keeper asked if there was any... Duplicate du or grayed, grayed out. out areas. Yeah. And I didn't see any, so I chose no. So it didn't put any in there. So it didn't overlap my stitches here. So it put two noses in. And I was showing it to Jamie today. It's like, something's not right here. So she told me what was wrong. <laughs> so... I have to take out the second nose, which is the middle one, and then move the eyeballs down. Mm -hmm. so. But it's still really but cute. But it is kind of cute. I yeah. mean, I like that little white spot. Of... Oh, and another thing, too, that I want to mention. The mouse that was here mm -hmm. didn't like. 
So I took it out. Um, between Jamie and I, we both drew up a candy corn. And then the next pattern came out and she has candy corns in it and it does not match mine at all. So I'm going to wait and see what the Third the one next is. one looks like and I'll probably pull that candy corn out and make it look more like these. Can you maybe just round off the corners? Yeah, that's something too. Something's going to change with it. Something's going to something, happen. Something's going to change. <laughs> that's all I have. Okay. Um, good segue because here's mine. Look at that. Wait a second. What pattern did you... Let me see your picture. Oh, so I did have the right picture. Oh, I had two. I gave it to you. Oh, thank you. I printed, I had the wrong printout. I didn't print out a new one. So there's that. I'm also doing mine on Opulence by... Misty. Dyed by Misty of Luminous Fiber Arts. Mine is a 32 count Lugana, though. And I'm almost done. That's really cute. I have about, let's see, 400 stitches of the ghost left, and then put spooky up top. That is so pretty. And then you have that stinky little mouse in there. I do, but he's cute. Look at him. <laughs> he's cute. That's the difference in size, so. Yeah. Quite a bit, actually. Mm hmm I like your color fabric. Me too. It's softer. And then the next clue will come out on the 21st, and that'll be the last clue. And we'll be done. Did you need this? No. Okay. Nope, you're okay. Do you have any more whips? That's all my whips. Do you have more? Oh, do I have more? <laughs> I also worked on my Nebraska Travel Poster. I'm doing mine on 32 Count Mercedes Lugana by Picture This Plus. And I just finished out that row of yellow. So I know I'm not talking about Whipco much, but it was a Whipco goal of mine this year to get all that yellow done, and I did get it. So I'm not focusing on Whipco, but if I get a goal, I want to acknowledge the goal. Right. So, but I'm doing the same thing where I got a blue fabric, so I don't have to stitch the, the sky. And I just want to note, I started mine on the bottom right, and you started yours in the middle. Top, top middle? In the middle. In the middle. In the middle. <laughs> in the middle with the ghost snowman. In the middle. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be in your mind all day now. <sighs> I sing that. Welcome. I sing that song every time I think about. I have, we have a project called In the Meadow. Yeah. I also worked a little bit on my temperature tree by Stitch and Mommy. I did not get near as much done as I wanted to, but I did finish the June branch. No more leaves, just the June branch. And this is done on 32 Count Lugana by Color and Cotton in the Color Garden Path. It was a fabric of the month a couple months ago. But it's pretty. All called four colors. Yeah, that's really... It's so soft. It is. I was just going to say yeah. that. And then, you know, what is it like in my life if I don't have a couple new starts? So I had a new start. I had two new starts. Buzzy String by Lizzie Kate. I'm doing this on 28 Count Coffee Tea Dyed Monaco. A scrap. This is one where I don't have two inches of border. But this is mine. Starting from the right. And I, let's see, I'm working on the ladybugs. There's a couple, like the bee, I still have to put his body in. But I didn't want to get my yellow out for two, three stitches when there's a couple other bees. So that's just cute. <laughs> I pulled all the colors from Stash. You can just, just look at it. <laughs> my, my watermelon has a... So weird. <laughs> I know, don't you love it? My watermelon has a mistake in it, but I just, I just went with it. It's fine. And then I was sitting at my table last night. I'm like, you know what? I want to start this one, and that's really as simple as it is, and I'm going to do it. And it's completely kitted. This is Season's Blessings 2 by Leela's Studio, and I'm doing the summer one. I did the spring back in spring. I am doing this on 32 Count Stars Hollow Blend. By R and R, called four colors. Just starting with a little birdie. So, 
those are my whips to finish this, huh? You got some finishes, FFOs? I do. Are you finished? Yeah. Okay. I have no more whips. All right. I had a low amount of whips this time. Those cells kept me busy. So, um, Farmhouse Christmas, I was doing the whole thing, all, what was there, nine of them, mm -hmm. and decided I didn't like it. So I did just the center. I had the center done. I can finish completing it. Decided to just frame it. I'm going to hang this on my sewing room wall. Mm, that would be perfect. So I think it turned out really cute, and I'm not sad one bit that I decided to not do all of the nine pieces. I loved them when they first came out, but it's just not me anymore. Mm -hmm. Now that's a five inch frame? This is a five by five. I got it on Amazon. Just Google five by five frame. Mm -hmm. It's not an expensive frame. It's faux wood, maybe. That's okay. I got it done, right? Yep, got it done. Exactly. Then I had my cute little yeah. Sure Signs of Summer by Darlene Dion Designs. And... I don't remember what I was going to say about it, but <laughs> there it is. <clears throat> I decided to make it into a pillow. And I started out trying to make it different than the pillow that's back there that, yeah, that I'd already done. Not really paying much attention. I thought I had it different. I look at them, I put them side by side. It's like they're so much the same. <laughs> they are almost identical. <laughs> but it turned out cute. I like the little sunflower button. And then I just sewed the little twine. Did or, you hand stitch it? I hand stitched okay. it, yeah. And then that's my back. This is the first time I've done it where I've slit the back. Usually I um, leave it open in the bottom. I'm used to it that way. <laughs> I'm used to it that way. So I was better able to stuff it evenly from mm -hmm. the bottom. This one, I, I just feel like it's not full in places. Mm -hmm. And hindsight, I didn't think I was sewing this on at that time. But... Now that I did sew it on, it would have covered that hand stitching anyway. But that's cute. So It is. I like how you fussy cut that. Yeah. So this is just um, fusible web that you put on the fabric. and. Um, actually, that is just a piece of fabric, and I just put some Eileen's glue on the oh. back of it and just glued it on. Perfect, then. Yeah. I love it. I love this design. Thank you, yeah. Darlene. That's so adorable. Yeah. I love the 3D bow on your pot. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? That's a lot. No, that is a lot. No. I'm excited about your finishes. Nothing else. No other finishes. Do you have finishes? No. Well, no. why not? <laughs> well, technically, I did have a finish. I mean, like FFOs? No. No. <laughs> so that no. my two is a lot. In a way, I do have some FFOs. I'm going to go into this here real quick. Okay. This is a little bit of what I was working on when we were, when we had our... Um, Vacay. Week vacay. Staycation. We have access to a maker space, my husband and I. You do have to pay monthly, so we go in when we know we have something. We'll pay for the month and then just go in all month and get some things done. So I knew I wanted to start a master set of DMC, and I wanted sturdy floss drops because I'm not going to sit there and bobinate. I'm just going to keep all my floss drops dropinated. So what I did, I showed these last video, I just purchased them on Etsy to just see how I liked the acrylic floss drops and if they would work for me. And I took those and I converted them into a file that I could laser cut from. I made some tweaks to it so I wasn't copying the floss tag itself, um, but I made some tweaks that would work really well for me. I started out by cutting them into wood just as a test piece see what they would be like so I got some of these done I'm not personally going to put my floss on here I know they do make some wood ones I just didn't do it in a way that it has a nice clean edge because it wasn't it test sanded yeah but I was able to get them done in acrylic so this this is not all of them oh I have so a yours? picture I'll also insert a picture of what it looked like. Are yours smaller than hers? Because they look smaller. I think they're a little bit bigger. I did make the hole bigger so I could put multiple skeins of floss in them. Um, oh, and one thing that I also did, and I'll show you here. This is a waste piece right here. 
So my husband had a great idea. I went ahead and put a hole in that waist piece and got them cut out. You can see them there. Normally you just throw these away and what I'm gonna do, I don't have any examples. Do you have any floss over there? None on the ring. Here, I'll take that. So say you have your floss on a ring and you don't know where the start is, I'm gonna take one of these and I'm gonna put it on my floss tag right there so you can always see where the start of it is when it's on the ring. So, I know that probably didn't help, but I'm excited about that. Yeah. This was still a test. There's a lot I have to do to make it work for my master set. Um, so I'm gonna go get some more acrylic and make it better, but you'll see in that picture I inserted, I had a piece that was 24 by 36 inches and I cut like 340 pieces out of it. So it took an hour and a half <laughs> just for that one. So you basically have a whole set cut, but you're gonna recut another set? Yeah. Okay. I don't quite have enough for a whole set. I need over 400. Okay. That's one thing I did. Haul. Do you have any haul? I do have some haul. So, and Prairie Schooler has their Santas. Everybody knows about it. I know that. <laughs> My one grandson loves penguins, mm -hmm. so I got this Santa with the penguins for him. Wasn't well, that just last year's 2021s? I think so. Um... My other grandson is so into hockey, so I found the Prairie Schooler Santa 2009 that's got the hockey Santa. So I'm going to do that for him for Christmas. That'd be good. So that I just got that. And of course we got our Floss Fix and Floss Frenzy from Fat Quarter Shop. Pepto Bismol pinks and purples. Pretty purples. Um, these are a lot better purples than the brights that we got, was it last month or a couple of months mm -hmm. ago? These are really pretty purples. Mom's also a purple person. I, yeah. And purple not, pumpkin eater. Not pink. I'm not a pink person. <laughs> well established here. Um, if you haven't gotten your color in cotton yet, look away. This is the July Fabric Club. We get the 32 count Lugana and the color is Haystack. So a nice little tan piece. It's a very pretty color. Probably shouldn't even say that much if I've told people to look away. But <laughs> yeah. I oh well. I can't shut up. I have no filter. <laughs> That's true. I knew it. I was just waiting for that. What else you got? I have this one. Ooh. I have that one too. Um Jamie actually purchased this for me, which I'm going to have to pay back, I know, but she got me a Mill Hill kit. Um, buttons and beads kit. Buttons and beads sunflower garden. It's adorable. So that'll be, I have two Mill Hill kits now. I haven't started either one of them yet. What's your other one? It was a sunflower one. Oh yeah, the sunflower bouquet. Yeah. Yeah. In case one looks more, there it is. <laughs> And that's, that's my haul. I wanted a springy one too, so I got another buttons and beads. And this is Spring Bluebird. I've been wanting to work on Mill Hill Mondays, so that's just a hashtag that a lot of people do. But I don't want to do winter right now, so I wanted something cute. And that's where the sunflowers came in. I was going to say, do sunflowers, not spring. Yeah. And I'm going to start this one. I, had, I got some Ada two to start on the ones that I do have already. So I got white, white, blue, yellow, and then I just use that for instead of the perforated paper. All right. I think that's all of our haul. Do you want to do plans or quilting first? We got a quilt to show you. We do have a quilt to show you. Um, you will hear some banging downstairs. Sorry. Yeah. But we will go ahead and pause and show you our quilt. Look at this beauty. Oh, it is wonderful. I know you're only seeing partials. We'll show you more of it. There's a lot going on in this quilt. We can't get it all in the screen. We've each done one of these. Yeah, so mom's is sitting behind us. This is mine. This is Vintage Sampler by Paintbrush Studios. This was a block of the month that we did through our local quilt store. Um, it was a block of the month from 2016. 
and we've actually finished piecing it in 2018. And let's see what else. This is 1880s to 1910s vintage shirting fabrics and dress prints. So we don't have the manufacturer of the fabric per se, but they are all shirtings and dress prints in um, Americana colors. So we'll fold it here and show you this part. There was applique, piecing. It is a scrappy quilt. And then how do you want to do your side? Oh, it's so pretty. So much going on. Um, we didn't write down the size, but I think it's like an 86 by 86. Kind of, yeah. Here, move over this way, Mom. Sorry. Put your hand. Put, yeah, we're showing the top. Put your hand down. <laughs> you I know that cop told me to raise my hand, so. <laughs> Would you stop lifting? <laughs> Would you grow? That's your fault. <laughs> there she is. Isn't she beautiful? Love it. What yes. are you doing? Let's flip it and show the whole bottom again. <laughs> it's like we've never done this before. It's been a while. It has been a minute. All right. I could just keep looking at oh, this yeah. thing. That was a hard block to do. Do you remember what that one's called? No. Radiant Star? Friendship Star? Not Friendship Star. I don't know. It was complicated block. Doesn't matter. Okay. One thing I forgot to mention is we did not iron that quilt. No. So you'll see wrinkles. It's fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. It's fine. Yep, exactly. That was a really fun one to quilt uh, to piece. We haven't yeah. quilted it yet. <laughs> okay. Um, plans. Plans. Um, what are we doing? Surviving. Yes. Um, Finishing out July. We still, we've promised them a, a quilt. Kit, Kit parade. parade. Yep. We'll get there. We're, we're getting there. Um, I think we should do a cross-stitch Kit kitted parade. parade of everything that we have kitted. Do you guys want to see that? Do you want to see what we have kitted but not started? That could be terrible for me. I might have to start everything. <laughs> I think it would do us good to actually see what we have kitted and out there and ready to go. Yep. Rejuven not that we need rejuvenated. We need time to stitch what we have. <laughs> so let us know in the comments if you want to see it or not. It's a good chance we're going to do it anyway, but we just want to know. <laughs> um, recap the sale. Yep. Uh, do you have any other plans? Because you're just ready to, let's just do this. <laughs> I don't have any plans. If I had plans, I'd be mentioning them. Well, we are going to do a retreat in, oh, a, yeah. in a week. Yeah, see? <laughs> um, we got that tell retreat. me where to go and I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> we got that retreat going on. Unfortunately, the busiest weekend we have in July is the weekend we're doing the retreat. So the Friday of the retreat, we're going to have to go to, we're going to have to cut it short and go to a wedding. Um, it's a great wedding, great family. So excited for them, but it is a quilt retreat. And then, let's see, Saturday, we have to come home right away and I'm going to go to a birthday party. And then I'm turning around and going on a work trip after that. Yeah. And then our sal is going to start not, it'll start immediately after our next floss tube video, August 1st. Be sure to get your materials if you're interested in doing with that with us. Follow the hashtag if you want to see progress. Just see what other people are doing. That's perfectly fine. If you don't have Instagram, Facebook, don't you worry about that. Just show us your progress if you want to in an email. Or just stitch it and just know that you're following along with us. That's all that matters. Um, what else? I think that pretty much wraps it up. That covers it. Yes, it does. Thanks for joining us, guys. We appreciate you being here. Um, like, subscribe. That's your line. You that go ahead it. and take it. Like, subscribe. <laughs> be, be sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> yes, be sure to like and subscribe our channel. Like this video. Leave us a comment down below. Let us know if you want to see a kit cross-stitch parade. Also, if you have any questions for our guys, if you want to ask those questions, do that in the, not the description box, but in the comments below. We'll have some links in our description box of a couple things that we talked about. Um, let's see. And follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram. I'm at Cornhusker State Stitcher and Jamie is at Jamie Mickelson. Absolutely. You guys have a great rest of your July.
I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye. Bye.